On this episode of Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show, we're going to be talking about Mahjong Madness tournaments at Mahjong time. This is going to be a not a presentation type format. I call it a talking head. So we'll be face to face and answer some questions about playing in a tournament at Mahjong time. If something comes up in chat where a demonstration is needed, then we'll switch over to Mahjong time and I'll do a demonstration. How's everybody doing? Welcome. I see Slava's here. Thank you, moderators, for helping with chat. I see Karen and Terry. Peg is here. I appreciate you all jumping online so that we can answer some questions that have come up about playing in tournaments. It's a lot of fun, and if you play at Mahjong time, it does feel like playing in a marathon. There's not too much different, but the time commitment is what's different because you need to play all day. Otherwise, it feels just like playing in a four back-to-back -back games, really. So, welcome. If this is your first time at a Table Talk Live episode, welcome. Type in chat if you have questions and put them in caps so that moderators can see them. Just in case I miss them, we can be sure to answer your questions. I do have some information in the video description below with details about the tournament that is coming up on the 18th. I see that we're, we are kind of having stormy weather here in Georgia. My stream health is in the red, which is not good. I have low video output at the moment. Okay, so if you lose me, it's because of bad weather. We're getting some storms again. You can see me okay. Hi, Barney. Okay. Shall we start with the questions? If anybody has any questions in chat, we'll do those first. And then I am going to mark those off if they come up. Thank you, Lynn. I'll mark those off if they come up in my list of questions, which I, I do have quite a few questions that I keep getting. I've been answering them on Facebook, but Sometimes it's nice to hear about it and see it in chat. So I see people see some buffering going on. Yeah, we've got um, video, video output low at the moment. So I don't know what is going on with Comcast, but let's, let's move on to questions. So the first question I see is, how experienced are the players at tournaments? That's a great question. And I would say that, that the answer applies in both in-person tournaments and online tournaments. You're going to have a variety. You're going to have people who've never played in a tournament before, and they're going to be really nervous until that first game. And then you're going to have people who love playing in tournaments and have played in many tournaments, probably in person and perhaps even live. So you're going to have a variety. Typically, what you will find at tournaments, whether in person or online, is that the player is more competitive than players who don't like playing in tournaments. Because a tournament is a competition. So the level of defense is up a notch. Okay, I hope that answers the question, Peg. Um, Michelle is asking for my email address. It is in the video description below. It's my name at mahjongcentral1g.com. And I spell one L in my name. 
Okay, so the next question is, how are players assigned seats, or can you play with friends? Cindy is asking that, and the answer is it's random. So when you log in, you'll be prompted to join a table, and assignments are preset. Nana is asking, I'm curious about how the $25 entry fee is paid if I don't have sufficient gold coins in my account. The last tournament, the entry fee was paid with gold coins, but this time it's going to be cash. So it doesn't matter how, how much you have in gold coins, although you can convert the coins, I believe. Slava, can you, can you answer that? Can gold coins be converted to cash? The other option is to deposit cash with the cashier. And I can, it's quite easy. You just click register for the tournament and if you don't have the cash in your account, you'll be prompted to make a deposit. You click make a deposit and you go to the cashier and it, once you say you wanna do a cash deposit, then it'll open a web page, and you'll be prompted to enter your information and your car, credit card information so that they can process the $25 entry fee. Then what you do is you go back into Mahjong Time, you find the tournament, and then click register and that $25 amount in your account will be applied to the tournament registration fee. Okay, so I, I hope that helps. Let's see. Uh, Nan Nana is also asking, are players divided by belt level? And the answer is no. And I don't know if, if there's a reason for that on the Mahjong Time side, but really the belt doesn't necessarily equate to skill level. Because when you join Mahjong Time as a new player, not as a new player to the game, but a new player to Mahjong Time, you start with a white belt. Everybody starts with a white belt. And then as you win games, your points are excuse me, accumulated, and then once you get to a threshold, you graduate to a new belt. And all that information is on the Mahjong Time website. And I'll have a link for that in the video description later. If you Google Mahjong Time ranking system, you'll find the thresholds on their website. So the belt doesn't necessarily equate to skill level because you could be a white belt and an advanced player. When the belt demonstrate or, or denotes your skill level is when you start getting into green belt with multiple stripes, brown belts, brown belts with stripes, and then of course black belt, because those are the players who have continually won in order to rank up. So between the white belt and probably the brown belt, it's really hard to determine what their actual skill level is. Once they get to a brown belt, that's when you can ascertain that they're a skilled player. I hope that helps. So Slava says gold coins cannot be converted to cash. So you need to make a cash deposit to make your entry fee. Okay, let's see, Lo uh, Lorraine is asking, what is the difference between Mahjong Madness tournament and American GMT tournaments? M the Mahjong Madness tournaments are host are hosted by Mahjong Time, but run, or I should do that the other way around. The, the tournaments are run on the platform of Mahjong Time, but it's hosted by Mahjong Madness or Gladys Grad of Mahjong Madness. So she's the one who is promoting the tournament and offering the prizes. Mahjong Time is the platform that is going to be played on. Uh, let's see. I hope that that helps. Okay, so yeah, the the other difference is that I see Slava said Mahjong Madness is a three round tournament, whereas the GMTs are four, four rounds. Okay, 
You're welcome, Nana. Oh, hi, Pamela. Okay, so I see that we're caught up on questions. If you have more questions, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about Mahjong Madness tournaments at Mahjong time. Mahjong Madness is owned and run by Gladys Grad. So she and Slava have partnered up to do virtual tournaments, which is wonderful. The last tournament was a great success, and so they're doing it again. Okay, yes, it looks like we have green health, so things are, are looking better. So let's, uh, if we don't have any more questions in chat at the moment, I'm going to go to my list of questions. Again, if you are just joining us and you have questions, write them in caps so we can differentiate between chit chat and actual questions for the tournament. Q&A. I uh, see Pamela is asking if they will ever do a Siamese tournament. That would be a question for Slava. Slava, if you can answer that question, that would be helpful because I do not know the answer to that. That would be a lot of fun if it's possible, but I don't think the tournament algorithm is on the Siamese platform at this time. Slava can correct me if I'm right or wrong there. Hi, Rich. Rich from New Jersey. Oh, good. Slava says that we will have Siamese tournaments in 2021. That's fantastic. That is going to be very exciting. So does that mean also, Slava, that there will be guilds on Siamese Mahjong as well? So we'll wait for him to answer that. I'm going to go ahead and open up my questions. Oh, here we go. Another question came up. How is playing in a tourna uh, playing tournament style on Mahjong time get you prepared for real tournaments? The defense at the table at a tournament, whether you're playing online or in person, is higher than playing a friendly social game. So in that sense, it is a great way to prepare for in-person tournaments. Also, you are playing on a timer. If you do not finish your four games, you will not get score. And that is true for both the virtual tournament and an in-person tournament. You get zero points if you are unable to complete a game within the allotted time. So that is another way that you are prepared by practicing in tournaments virtually because that applies in person. You're playing on a timer. You have to, in a in-person game or in-person tournament, you have to play four games in 55 minutes. And Slava, how many games, uh, do you, or how much time do you have? Is it, do you have 60 minutes to play four games in the Mahjong Madness tournament at Mahjong time. I believe that is the way they set it up. I'm going to double check on the website. Here's the schedule for the tournament. So you have three rounds and you get one hour 60 minutes for each forehand round with a 10 minute break in between. Okay, yep, 60 minutes. All right, here we go, next question. Are there any modifications to the Mahjong Time flat platform during tournaments? The game, the look and feel of the game is the same. It feels like you're playing in a marathon. What is different is the prompt to join a table. When you're logged into the game, you'll be prompted to join a table 
I'm not sure when the prompt comes up, maybe five or 10 minutes before the game is to start or the round is to start, you'll get a prompt to join the table. That's really the only thing different that I know of. At the end of the round, results will show your standing and then you'll exit the game or the table. Uh, I think Slava said no live stream tomorrow, but I'm going to have a, two live streams tomorrow. So I'll do a, a separate live stream, one for Siamese and one for the four-player game. And that will begin at 5.30, starting with Siamese Mahjong. And this is a test to, to figure out what the timing or to test out the schedule and I'll try to find a way to set up the live streams so that as many people as possible can be there live. They'll, they'll both be recorded though, so they can be watched in the repost. Okay, I see a question from Carol. How do we know if there's a new version of Mahjong Time or Siamese Mahjong, I only found out about Mahjong Time upgrade due to others talk about it on Facebook. I believe when you log in, you should be prompted if you have an older version. Slava, is that correct? Slava can confirm that. But I believe if you have an older, an outdated version, you'll be prompted to upgrade. I was recently prompted to upgrade the site. The last time I logged in to the Siamese Mahjong platform, I had to do an upgrade because it prompted me. Uh, let's see, we have a question. Re modifications at Mahjong Bandits Tournament. They did not have the game helper. Okay. Uh, the game helper is not related to Mahjong Madness per se. Mahjong Madness is hosting the tournament at Mahjong time. The game helper is a feature that is a privilege or perk for paid subscriptions. So if you are a premium subscriber, or a VIP subscriber at Mahjong Time, then you have access to the Game Helper. So if you have a free account, which is totally fine, you can play in the tournament and you could play for free up to four games or as long as you have Dragon Chips, uh, you can play, but you don't have access to the Game Helper. So a premium, will, premium membership will give you the Game Helper and so will VIP. Okay, excellent. Barney said the game, the prompt to join a table comes up 15 minutes before the first game in a round. Thank you, Barney. Okay, so Slava confirmed that you will be prompted to upgrade, otherwise you won't be able to play the game. Cindy's asking, during tournament, the Mahjong Time Sidebar Tile Helper, is it available during tournament play? Yes. If you have a premium or VIP membership. But you can see all the tiles on the table. A lot of people don't even use that game helper. Uh, some people find it helpful. Some people don't use it at all, even if they have access to it. Barney's asking, if you finish four games in less than 60 minutes, does a fifth game start or do you just sit or start your break time? The, any, any time that it remains after four games, you will launch and do a new game. The, the interesting bit is that you, you may or may not be able to finish it. I played the last tournament I played in, we got in five games and we actually were able to finish it. So. It really just depends on how much time you have for that fifth game. If you run out of time before the game ends, you will get a zero.
Okay, let me see. Um, somebody is saying they removed the game helper at the Mahjong Madness tournament. I have a paid account. So, um, Slava, I'm confused. Can you confirm? Is the game helper removed from the Mahjong Madness tournament? And also, can you confirm if the Mahjong Madness tournaments stops at four games? Because the last one that I played in, we went into five games. So Slava is checking on a couple things. So the two things that, uh, the two questions that are open at the moment is, will there be a game helper for players who have a paid membership? And will the games stop at four? Or if there's time remaining, will players be able to go into a fifth game? Those are the two questions remaining open until Slava confirms. So while he's checking, let's see. Okay, we do have another question. I believe that the player who's Ellie Helm 29, you could not put your cursor on a tile and see how many have been discarded and available. I believe that is a setting. So that should be available if you have it on your settings. I believe it's called game uh, tooltip or uh, discard help. Let me go to my settings and see what it's called. I'm not sure about the numbers shown when you ho when you hover over a tile. Slava will have to um, talk about that because I didn't see it defined in settings. Slava says no game helper during Mahjong Madness tournament. Okay, now we know. Thank you very much. Oh, it's Helen. Okay, thank you, Helen. Okay, thank you, Peg. Kathleen asks, can future Madness tournaments be four rounds? like GMT since cost for Mahjong Madness is more? That would be a question for Slava. Slava also confirmed that you can go into a fi a f the fifth game if you have time remaining after four games. So yes, you will go into another game if there's time remaining. For Gladys Grad, uh, players are requesting four rounds as opposed to three. I talked to Gladys and she did say that longer tournaments are planned. Not only four rounds, but multiple days. So you can look forward to that. This will be a reason to join Mahjong Time because it's the only platform that has tournaments and other competitive play and that would be marathons and guilds. Lots of good reasons to join Mahjong Time. Look for my email in the video description below. I can send you some information about that trial. Okay, Dan, chasing forever. Do you join a table once and play four or maybe more for an hour and then break? Yes, that's correct. You play uh, consecutive games four minimum and then if there's time remaining you'll go into a fifth or even sixth if you play fast and then and then you'll exit the game once the results display and then you can do your break and then be back at your your computer no later than five minutes before that next round starts you'll be prompted you can click in take a few breaths and start playing again
Okay, so I'm going to go to my, my questions here. So let me um, highlight them differently so I know whether, whether they've been covered or not. Okay, we answered that one. Uh, Slava, one question that I have here is, what is the decision time for passes and for discards and picks? Is it eight seconds, 10 seconds? How long do you have to decide? Okay, so I'm caught up here. Somebody had asked, what happens to the profit from the tournament? Because everybody's going to be paying $25, and the attendance may exceed the prize pool. And in that case, that goes to Gladys and her business for Mahjong Madness and for further tournaments. She's got to be able to fund the tournaments. So we're all about helping women-owned businesses and small businesses. So that is encouraging. Okay, Slava says nine seconds to discard or claim a discard. What about passing? Is it nine seconds for passing in the Charleston? Oh, Peg, that's nice. Success should be rewarded. I agree, and I'm sure Gladys will be encouraged to hear that. Okay, so for the Charleston, it's the same. Oh, wait a minute. He's saying no, it's different. Okay, what's the timing for tournaments? Or not tournaments, for passing in the Charleston. And we're going to go with this episode until all the questions have been answered. So we've already been going for a half an hour and I have only, I haven't even I've only answered one question from my list. So let's see. I don't want to go too far ahead. Up to 1 minute for a decision for the Charleston passes. Wow, that's generous. Uh, I will double check with you again before I post the show notes. So incidentally, regarding show notes, there will be a link to show notes in the video description below after the show. All right, so and um, let's see, we answered that question. The other question is on here. How will winners be determined? Does anybody want to know? Okay, I see your question there, Dan. I'm going to go ahead and answer this question first, though. The winners will be rewarded. The rewards, incidentally, are below the video description. But players will be ranked based on game points, which is based on the value on the card. There are three prizes for... The, top, the players who win the most, the top three players who win the most games, they will win $50. And then 
places one through six will be cash prizes. And that information is in the video description. Okay, Dan is asking, you join a table and then play for an hour, then what? So yes, you, you join a table, you play for an hour, and then you take a 10 minute break. You can walk away from your computer and grab a drink or a snack or go on a bio break and then come back to the game. You have 10 minutes to stretch your legs and do other things. And it, it's a rush. I, I had to rush to get what I wanted to do done in those 10 minutes. So you might wanna have snacks prepared. You might wanna have a nice big tumbler of a beverage and, or maybe not have a beverage all day. I don't know. I guess that depends on you. <laughs> Uh, consecutive games at the same table. There are four consecutive games minimum. If you have time remaining, you'll go into a fifth game, but it will be 60 minutes. If you are unable to finish that fifth game in those within that 60 minute mark, then you'll that will game will just end and you'll get zero points for that last game. <laughs> okay. Okay, you posted a question t twice, huh, Barney? I'm gonna scroll back and see if I can find it. Let's see, did you put it in caps? Let's see here. I see a question. If you finish four games in less than 60 minutes, does the fifth game start or do you just start your break? I believe we answered that question. Is that the question you're asking? We did answer that question and the answer is you load into a fifth, fifth game and you should try to play and finish because you have a potential to get more points. Did you have a question before that, Barney? If you type your questions in chat, the moderators will be able to catch any question Okay, let's see. Okay, here I found a question, Barney. If you start and finish the fifth or sixth game, does the score for the fifth or sixth game count to a player's total final score? Yes. Bar um, Slava can confirm that, but I don't know why a game would continue if you don't get the points if you win. So I would say I hope so. Okay, uh, Hazel says, at the last Mahjong Manus tournament, we played only four games and used the remaining time for a break, no fifth game. Well, that's, uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Slava, can you confirm? I did not participate in that particular tournament. I know that the tournament I was in, in January, we played a fifth game because we had time and somebody actually won, by the way. So for the last tournament, it sounds like somebody's saying only four games were played with time remaining. Okay, I am scrolled all the way to the bottom. And Slava confirmed that winning extra games does count. No fifth game for the last tournament, Slava. Can you confirm if a fifth game or more would would go on, or is it is it stopped after four? We need confirmation on that. Uh, Helen says that she had a forty minute forty minute break. Wow, you could have probably played at least two games in there. Uh, so. Um, I believe it should launch. If you have any time remaining, the game will deal the tiles. You'll go right into another game if there is time remaining. The kicker is, do you have the time to finish it? Because you continue to play until that timer goes off. Otherwise, it might look like you've abandoned the table. Is that an issue, Slava? If you leave the game after, 
after the four games, if you walk away, does that affect your standing in the tournament? I'm gonna see if I can try to find Barney's other question. I have to scroll through. I found, I found your question. Oh, there's no time stamp on that. Oh, here we go, Michelle. That prompt to join a room is 15 minutes before the round begins. Okay, I saw that. That's a comment not a question, so I'm trying to see if I can find your question. Okay, I, I can't find your first question, Barney, unless it is about the fifth game, which we did answer. So it looks like I might be missing another one of your questions. Oh, is it Nope, we answered that about 60 minutes in the fifth game start. We did answer that. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. If you, if we did not answer your question, Barney, if you could repost it, I'm sorry about that, but I'm having trouble finding it. If, if we did miss something from you. The Mahjong Madness tournament is different than the GMT tournament. There are only three rounds, whereas a GMT tournament is four. And I believe a GMT tournament is 50 minutes, whereas the Mahjong Madness tournament is 60. And that may be why it's 60 minutes, because you have more time and fewer rounds. All right. Oh, that was the question. Okay, excellent, Barney. Thank you. All good. Okay, excellent. Okay, so Slava did change the GMT tournament to 60 minutes now. That's interesting. Okay, very good. Good to know. All right, so I'm going to go back to my questions uh, as we wait for more questions in chat. Somebody had asked how often will Mahjong Madness tournaments be held and Gladys is planning on once a month. She's hoping to do some longer tournaments, maybe a two day tournament or something like that. So if you have not subscribed to Mahjong Madness newsletter, please go to mahjongmadness.com and sign up for her newsletter. You can get her newsletter and be up to date on her tournament offering. Okay, the next question we had, how does a Mahjong time, or how does a tournament differ from a regular Mahjong time game? Each game for the tournament looks and feels like a regular fun game, if you already play at Mahjong time. It looks and feels the same. The difference is that you're gonna be playing in three rounds with four consecutive games each. So when the game is over, the tiles will be pushed into the center of the table and a new deal will come up. So four consecutive games, that's the difference. And then when you are at the end of the round, the results will display and you'll exit the game or the table and then take your 10 minute break, come back and wait for your prompt to join the next table. I'm looking at my notes, that's why I'm looking to the side, just so you know. Okay, oh, okay, thank you, Peg. Barney's caught up, he, he had his question answered, very good. Okay, the next question that we had in the community is, what are marathons, and are they good practice for a tournament? This is a really good question for players who are nervous to play in a tournament you can practice by playing in marathons, which is one round with four games. So you can practice 
making decisions and playing consecutive games. So yes, it is good practice. Also, the players at marathons and tournaments are typically more, have a more defensive style of play. So your experience as far as getting your tiles and, and winning a hand in the end game may be different because players typically are more defensive and they will break up their hand typically so as not to discard a risky tile. So if you're waiting for a single or a pair tile that is fresh, you might not get it because someone at the table could be a very defensive player and they'll sit on that tile. Well, they won't sit on it, they'll hold it in their hand. You know what I mean, I think, yeah? Okay, let's see. Um, I, I will have a link in the show notes to a web post on the Mahjong Time blog where they explain marathons for the 2020. So look for show notes and the question that says, are marathons, what are marathons and are, are they good practice for a tournament? So you can look for that in show notes after probably tomorrow because I want to edit this video and then repost it. Okay, let me just double check and see if we have any questions in the room. If you've just joined us, thank you again for coming. Uh, we're talking about Mahjong Madness tournaments at Mahjong time. Oh, <laughs> Peg raised her hand about being nervous in a, playing in a tournament. It's a lot of fun. It really is fun. And it's actually a great way to practice uh, playing in a tournament in a virtual setting and then playing in person because in a virtual setting, at least your home, you're in the comfort of your own home and you can practice kind of desensitizing yourself playing on a clock. And that way when you start playing in a, in person events, eventually, then you'll maybe have desensitized yourself from that anxiety. Although I, it, you probably will still be a little anxious. Even when I've played in many tournaments and when I go, I'm always a little bit nervous for that first game. But once you get through the first game, you kind of settle in and you find your stride. Pamela is asking how different are in-person tournaments? In-person tournaments, you have the interpersonal element that can speak volumes. In a virtual tournament, you don't have that benefit because everything's electronic and you don't see your opponents. There is one tell in an online game, but in a in-person tournament, there's a lot of unspoken information that can be given at the table for a very observant player because people have tells. Trust me, I've studied it and I've proven that it exists for, um, for Mahjong. So there are tells in in-person games, but we don't have that benefit when we play online. There is one tell when you play online. And, in, and if you wanna know what that is, I'd be happy to let you know. Okay, someone is asking, what is Gladys's email? I see your question, Barney. Let me find Gladys's email for you. Oops. Let me get that over there. Gladys's email is Gladys, G L A D Y S, grad. G R A D at, I believe, gmail.com. I hope that's right. Gladys Grad at gmail.com. I thought I was going to see a mahjongmadness.com, but I didn't. Okay, so Barney asked when we play at GMT tournaments, 
we know where we stand at the end of every round. Is this, is this the same for Mahjong Madness tournaments? Yes, you'll see a result. Um, a, a window will pop up for the table results, and then you can check your standing on the Mahjong Time, or Mahjong, yes, the Mahjong Time website. They do update the player standing on that web page that shows the registered players, I believe. They will show the ranking as the tournament progresses. Michelle says hesitation, yes. There's a hesitation in person and there's a hesitation uh, at Mahjong time. Anytime you see a tile discarded and that little yellow swirl goes around and around, that's a hesitation and you know somebody is considering that tile. Depending on their exposures or the other discards at the table, you might be able to figure out at least what category they're playing or what tile they need or what tiles they're holding. Uh, yes, Peg says, uh, didn't you do an early video on tells? Yep, that was in my early days. I think, I think that was year two uh, on my YouTube channel. It's called At the Table, and I'll, I'll put a link in the video description or in the show notes so you can watch those if you want. Um, the, the videos in there are, are primarily about in-person games, though. Not so much about in-game tells, because there are not that many in a virtual game, because you don't really see each other when you play. Okay, Maya's asking, are players matched randomly or by rank? They're matched randomly, as far as I know. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, random. Everything, it's random. Thank you, everybody in the room there. Okay, let's see. So we really don't need to go into this next question. The ranking, well, I'll just share what the question was. Can you explain round points or game points? This tournament will be based on game points. So it's going to be an accumulation of your game points per the American Mahjong or the National Mahjong League card. No, ta no tournament points or, or table points for this tournament. So we've got that question answered. And we have 10 minutes. And I do have five or six more questions here, unless anybody else in the room has questions. Sue's asking, what are your tells? Can other players read you? Are you talking about me personally? What are my tells in, a, in an in-person game? I don't talk much. And I will chit-chat if it's not about the game. I don't say anything about the game in play. Nada, nothing, not a word. Like... Where are the jokers? I don't have any flowers. I don't have a pair. None of that business. I'm very quiet. And typically, I don't talk at all when I play. I just play um, or comment or answer questions if someone asks me something. But I typically am quiet during a game. And then chit-chat during mixing. But because I've been studying tells and from the poker perspective, studying body language and tells, I am very controlled. I, I've been training myself to control hesitations, flinches, other body language like tensing up or showing nerves with my hands and flip, flipping tiles, things like that. I try very hard to be stoic during a game so as not to give off any tells. If you want to train yourself to do that or learn how to do that, watch people play poker and look at their demeanor. Some of them almost look angry, but you don't have to do that. But anyway, it's a very interesting study. If you want to study poker tells 
As a matter of fact, I've purchased some books on poker tells because I want to study it even more. And I think it all applies to Mahjong. When we start playing in person, I'll do new videos on that because, as I said, I'm studying on uh, strategies and tells, including tells. Oh, Terry makes me talk and she makes me laugh, let me just say. Terry's hilarious and I do laugh. I do respond if people ask me things, but I try to be, you know, pretty introspective, I guess, when I play the game. Someone's asking, what happens if someone has a computer issue or thunderstorm and loses connection during a tournament? That the onus is on the player. There's nothing Mahjong Time can do. If you lose connectivity, then that's on you and you just have to hope for the best because there's nothing that can be done. This is the nature of the beast playing online. So you just got to hope for good connectivity that day. What I might do is ask that nobody else in the household be online. If you have gamers in the house, you might ask them not to do any gaming during your tournament to free up bandwidth. I don't know if that will help or not, but in my mind, it might make an impact. If you are able to come back after disconnection, you will be able to return to the tournament, Slava says. But if you do not come back, you may be disqualified. You will be disqualified and someone else will be playing for you. So make every attempt to return to the game. Don't just throw up your hands and walk away. Try to get back into the game. Oh, after the round is over. Okay, that's excellent. That's an excellent point, Slava, thank you. I'm going to make notes in the editing, so I will update show notes with comments and questions that are not in my document. <laughs> Michelle, she says, I'd love to tell my husband you can't play right now because I'm in a tournament. I, I have the same challenge because I have a gamer and my husband also is on the computer a lot, both with games and writing. So although he doesn't have to, he, his writing is local, so he can write. He doesn't have to play in a game. But yeah, I understand that. Uh, that's a challenge. Okay, so let's see. An, another question that I have here is, and this is a bit sticky here. So <laughs> one player asked me, can players cheat when playing online? And they, they can, they can cheat. However, I don't know how. I could imagine one thing, but I'm not gonna share it just because, you know, we wanna be above reproach and not share how to cheat. But Mahjong Time has ways of knowing if there's collusion going on. And there are stiff penalties for anybody who cheats. I will have a link to an FAQ on Mahjong Time about their ethics. So I think the community at Mahjong Time is very healthy and ethical. So I, I don't even question it myself. Uh, okay, B Garner is asking, so can you sum up how much time to allow for a tournament? I am hearing one hour plus 10 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, three times. Yes, and actually here is the, the actual schedule. I had it up a while ago and here it is. So you can see the schedule and it's gonna, whatever this, this URL is, I'll have it in the show notes. If you click that, it will adjust for your time zone. I'm in Eastern time. It's going to start at one and it will end at 420. It'll start at 17 GMT. Okay. 
okay? All right, so we covered that question now. Let's see, somebody had asked about playing on an iPad, playing a tournament on an iPad. If I get bounced out of the app, will I be able to join? In a regular, in regular play, I can rejoin a game in progress, but not one that has started the Charleston. That I don't know. Slava, can you answer to that? I've never experienced that. As far as I know, if you have connectivity issues, you will be prompted to return to your game. And the same applies to tournaments. I personally play on both an iPad and my desktop computer, but I much prefer playing on my desktop computer. The smaller the screen, the smaller the resolution, and you don't have the same features on a mobile device than you do on the desktop application. So I highly recommend playing a tournament on a desktop or laptop, but you can certainly play in a tournament on a mobile device. All right, so let me check to see if there's any questions. Um, looks like, okay. We have, uh, when I, uh, Shirley's asking, when I've been kicked out and return, I return to the game, but the Charleston is done on the system. So if you lose connectivity, a robot will take your place. And when you return, I think it takes a few seconds for the game to realize that you're back and for the robot to back out. Slava can confirm that, but I believe that's correct. Okay, so let me see my other question here. We got that one there. I only have four left. And we have one minute to seven. I was hoping to go one hour. So we'll go over just a little bit. Somebody had asked, I have a free Mahjong Time membership and I'm struggling with the controls most of which aren't available to free memberships. How do I get acquainted with them for tournament play? So in regards to playing in a tournament, the look and feel should be the same. And the game helper is not available in Mahjong Madness tournaments. So there should be no difference in the look and feel for a Mahjong Madness tournament. So that takes care of that question. Someone had asked me about the settings and how to customize your experience. This is when I would play in Mahjong School, play with your game settings until you like the feel of the game with the settings that you've selected. There's a cog in the upper right corner of Mahjong Time next to the flag of your country in the very upper right corner you click that and then click game settings and you can select and deselect different settings to customize the experience in a game and just play with it until you like the way it behaves and i usually take a screenshot of it and save it just in case there's some kind of a reset and all my preferences are set to default all right here, another question that i've received is what are the buttons on the left of the uh, during the game there's a toolbar on the left side of the game it's called a uh, I call it an in-game it's called a pass bar uh, the technical term for it is uh, I think it said is it Joker ignore Joker bar Slava what is the name of that vertical bar uh, about ignoring jokers in the game. I have a link to a document or a PDF, a one-page 
PDF that defines each one of those tools in that bar. So I'll have a link for that in show notes so that you can study that and use it. I personally don't use them because I'm so focused on the game, I don't want to mess around with buttons. So it's called the auto pass. Okay, auto pass. Slava, can you explain how those buttons work? It's about, it has something to do with jokers, doesn't it? Or about when you're ready to win? It makes the system pass for you so you don't get prompted every time a tile is discarded that you could potentially claim. The default one is ignore jokers. I don't understand what that means though. What does ignore jokers mean? The default setting is to ignore jokers. Okay, I think that covers the questions that I've been given by the community. Does anybody have any questions in the room? I think we've covered everything so far. So Slava says that ignore jokers means that it doesn't see the jokers. Okay. That's interesting. All right. If nobody has any questions, I think we've got it all. If you would like to play at Mahjong Time, please look for my e email in the video description below and I can send you some information about the VIP trial. And if you want to try to get used to playing on a timed game, play at Mahjong time and play in marathons or the rounds. That's four back-to-back -back games. That's a way to get used to playing in a tournament. And I encourage you to try it out. It's a lot of fun. It's very challenging. Okay, someone's saying something about Gladys' newsletter. You just go to mahjongmanis.com. You should be able to sign up for her newsletter there. Let me see if I can find where on her site the sign up is for her newsletter. I'm not sure how to sign up for her newsletter. I wonder if you have to be a tournament goer to sign up for her newsletter. So if you sign up for a tournament, you'll be on her list. I think you might have to be a player to be on the new, in the newsletter. I'll confirm that with Gladys and I'll update that in my show notes. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Unless there's any more questions. Oh, you get the newsletter. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming to this episode of Table Talk Live to talk about the Mahjong Madness tournaments at Mahjong Time. I just want to say a special shout out to Gladys Grad and Mahjong Madness, F Mahjong Madness, and Slava at Mahjong Time who've partnered together to bring virtual tournaments to the community. It's a wonderful opportunity and I hope you take advantage of it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers. <laughs>